I don't know about you, but it's kind of hard to believe that the Queen Mary 2 is 20 years old. But on the 12th of January 2024, it's 20 years since the ship set sail on its maiden voyage. Queen Mary 2 is a pretty remarkable ship. She's the only true transatlantic liner in service today, the only transatlantic liner built in the 21st century, and the first true ocean liner built in a generation. The ship when it entered service was the largest, the longest, the tallest and the widest passenger ship ever constructed and even to this day she still remains as the largest ocean liner ever put to sea, eclipsing the likes of Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, Normandy in pretty much every measurable aspect. And the road to Queen Mary 2 wasn't necessarily an easy one, it required Cunard to be acquired by the Carnival Corporation and Carnival's money to build Queen Mary 2, a pretty ambitious project at the time overseen by the Chief Naval Architect, Dr. Stephen Payne. So with Queen Mary 2 now celebrating 20 years in service, I thought it might be nice to look back at some of the highlights of the ship's history over the last 20 years. Queen Mary 2 was first announced to the world as Project Queen Mary shortly after Cunard was acquired by Carnival in the late 1990s, but they were studying the viability of building a new transatlantic liner, the first one to enter service in a generation. The marketing at the time spoke about the creation of a ship for a new generation of passengers to allow them to experience the golden age of travel because they'd missed the first one. And this ultimately led to the ship being formally announced in the year 2000. She was built at Le Chantier de l'Atlantique shipyard in Saint-Nazaire in France and the first steel was cut in 2002. The ship was floated out for the first time in 2003 and by December 2003 she was ready for handover to Cunard under the command of Commodore Ronald Warwick. She sailed to Southampton and on 8th of January 2003 she was christened by Her Majesty the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, at a gala ceremony in Southampton alongside. The ship then stayed in Southampton for provisioning before she set sail on her maiden voyage. This departed Southampton, Cunard's home and the home of transatlantic express services since the 1920s, but rather than going on the express run across to New York, Queen Mary II's maiden voyage was actually to Fort Lauderdale in Florida in the United States. And this seems like a bit of a strange place to send the largest ocean liner ever to be built, but at the time Cunard's head office was based in Miami and so Florida and the United States was very important to the company when Queen Mary II entered into service. Ultimately in April of 2004 she would meet with QE2 in New York and undertake a tandem transatlantic crossing with the two ships sailing side by side. When they arrived in Southampton, Queen Mary II became the flagship of the Cunard line and was presented with the Boston Cup, a symbolic solid silver cup about 2.5 feet tall that had been carried on board QE2 for her entire service career. And this symbolized the transition uh, from QE2 to Queen Mary II as Cunard's flagship. In 2004, the ship was also used for a very special purpose. She was sent to uh, Piraeus for the port for Athens for use as a floating hotel during the Olympic Games. And there she played host to a number of sporting teams, including the US men's basketball team, as well as uh, politicians and dignitaries, including former British Prime Minister Tony Blair and former US President George H.W. Bush. The ship's been used also for more whimsical purposes, and in 2005, she carried a large trunk with the first signed copy of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, which sailed across the Atlantic from the UK to the US for its inaugural presentation in New York, uh, aboard Queen Mary II. In 2006, whilst departing Fort Lauderdale, the Queen Mary II made contact with the pier, which damaged one of her pods. And this led to a number of ports being cancelled on a voyage down to Rio de Janeiro. This ultimately resulted in a passenger sit-in, which was a pretty tense experience for those on board and quite a difficult time for Cunard and for the crew on the ship. But ultimately, she was repaired. That same year, the ship rendezvoused with the original RMS Queen Mary in Long Beach, California, where she met her namesake and the two ships exchanged whistle blasts. Uh, Queen Mary 2 actually carries one of Queen Mary's original whistles on her funnel. So in some respects, it was almost as if the uh, Queen Mary was saluting herself, which is a bit of fun as well. In 2007, Queen Mary II undertook her first ever world cruise, being the largest Cunard ship to ever do so. This resulted in a number of very spectacular events, including her maiden call in San Francisco, where thousands of people came out to see the ship. She sailed across the Pacific and arrived in Sydney, where she was met again by huge crowds of people. Uh, to see the ship arrive in the Australian city. 
I was on board that particular voyage and it was remarkable to see huge crowds of people come out early in the morning, about six o'clock, to see QM2 uh, arrive in the harbour city. She stayed alongside at the naval base, but that afternoon the QE2 arrived and the two ships rendezvoused in Sydney Harbour. And this is one of the most remarkable events that I've ever seen because as QE2 was making her way into the harbour, hundreds of thousands of people descended on Sydney to see the two ships rendezvous in the harbour. And it led to massive crowds, but there was also thousands of boats in the harbour, which led to a huge impact for people who were travelling and commuting around Sydney. The boats blocked the harbour, which then didn't allow the ferries to depart, so people were late home from work. There were people on the roads, which blocked the cars. There was delays on the trains, all sorts of chaos, um, because there were such huge crowds there to see the two ships. And I don't think that the planners had expected such massive crowds, but as someone who loves maritime history and the Cunard Line, it was a very proud moment to see everybody coming out to see these two awesome ships together. The beginning of the following year, QM2 met QE2 and the newer Queen Victoria, and another meeting of the Queen's events took place. This was QE2's last year in service, so it was quite an emotional experience, and there's some great photographs that were taken of the three ships together. In 2011, there was the first time that the three current Cunard Queens met, when Queen Elizabeth was added to the fleet and the three Cunarders uh, rendezvoused during that year. This has been repeated on a number of occasions and always draws a big crowd. In 2013, the ship completed its 200th transatlantic crossing, which interestingly enough, she'll make her 400th transatlantic crossing this year. So she really has been transiting the Atlantic quite regularly. And keeping in mind, of course, that this was impacted by the global cruise shutdown, Queen Mary 2 has maintained a remarkable presence on the North Atlantic as the last liner that's operating on that transatlantic service. 2015 was Cunard's 175th anniversary. And of course, Queen Mary 2 was a central focal point. The ship led the three queens into Liverpool uh, for a rendezvous outside the Cunard building. And this was a spectacular event. Again, hundreds of thousands of people on the banks of the River Mersey to see the three ships with the Queen Mary 2 right there in the center as the flagship of the Cunard fleet. The following year, QM2 was given a significant refurbishment dubbed as QM2 Remastered. And this saw some internal rebuilding of many of the public spaces and also some very thorough carpeting changes and soft furnishing changes throughout the ship. Incidentally, Queen Mary 2 has just completed another big refit uh, in 2023, so she is looking absolutely spectacular at the time that this video comes out. In 2019, the Queen Mary 2 undertook a transatlantic crossing in honour of the 100th anniversary of Cunard relocating its services to Southampton. I was very fortunate to be on board that particular voyage as one of the guest speakers, and the ship encountered very, very heavy seas and strong uh, weather conditions during that voyage, but was full of people who were passionate about the history of the ship and also the history of Cunard on the transatlantic run. But despite the celebrations in 2019, in 2020, like all ships around the world, the Queen Mary 2 was put into warm layup as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Queen Mary 2's world cruise was cancelled in Fremantle in Australia, and once again, I was on board for that particular voyage and was there when the ship's voyage was cancelled. It was a very emotional experience. QM2 sailed home with a handful of passengers, everybody else had to leave the ship and fly home, and of course the crew sailed with the ship all the way back to Southampton. And for the next 18 months or so, when the ship remained laid up for the rest of 2020 and into 2021 as part of the global crew shutdown. However, Queen Mary 2 re-entered service and is once again on the transatlantic crossings, uh, connecting the two continents, Europe and America, by sea, something that Cunard has been doing since 1840. As I mentioned, Queen Mary 2 has just recently had a refurbishment and she is now just setting sail on her world cruise and will once again circumnavigate the globe, making calls in all parts of the world because she is most beloved everywhere she goes, uh, just like the QE2 before her and has a reputation akin to the original Cunard Queens. She is a spectacular ship. She's one of a kind, the largest and most expansive ship that's ever been put into service for Cunard, the largest ocean liner to ever serve uh, globally and of course the last of the great transatlantic liners at the time that this video is made. Queen Mary 2 is the only true liner operating line voyages around the world. And I think if you've ever thought about having an opportunity to sail on board Queen Mary 2, if you've ever thought it's something on your bucket list, take a voyage on board this ship. It is so spectacular to be there in the middle of the Atlantic where there's nothing but ocean around you. You are on the 
the, the Queen Mary II, this ship that is the, the bridge between the Americas and Europe. So that's just a few highlights of QM2's 20 year career to date. I know there's many, many more that I haven't covered on and I know that many of you would have had your own special experiences on board the ship and been part of historic voyages on board the ship that I haven't covered here. So let me know what your favorite QM2 experience was in the comments below. Happy birthday, Queen Mary 2. Congratulations to Cunard and to the team there on board the ship, Captain Hall, Captain Hashmi, and everybody who works on board the Cunard flagship. Congratulations on 20 years of service. Here's to many, many more years in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I hope to see you on board Queen Mary 2.